So good morning um, for those who are in the U.S. and uh, still morning in uh, in Europe. We thank God for we thank God for waking us up early and also already having started us on our way. Now we are here to commit ourselves to Him, to recommit our lives, but also to to pray. We are continuing with our uh, topic: Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Let us have a short word of prayer before we proceed. We thank you, Father, for allowing us again to come to Thee. Father, even now as we are going to read Your Word, we pray, Father, for the outpouring of Your Holy Spirit that He may lead us into all truth and set us free, Father, from all uh, snares of evil. We came to seek Your face. Make Yourself manifest, Father, in this devotion hour and come and inhabit our praise and worship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Luke 11, 11 verse 1, our, our memory text says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And I know it's a desire of each and every one of us to, uh, to know how we need to pray for God to teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. So far we have seen two conditions which we are told God will hear and answer our prayers. Uh, we, also, we, also, we have seen the, the need to feel and to realize the poverty of our, of our souls. But also we have started uh, looking at faith. Um, and we need to pray in faith. And what does it mean? We have clearly looked at what is faith. So faith is the expecting the word of God itself to do what the word says and to depend upon that word itself to do what the word says. If the word says go to the left and there is a big mountain to climb, the, the word will make sure it enables you to climb the mountain. If there's a sea and the word say go forward, the word will make sure the sea will be a dry ground for you to walk in, for me to walk in. So faith is the expecting of the word of God itself to do what the word says. And depending upon that word itself to do what the word said, that is faith. So we, when we looked at the, uh, the feeling of the poverty of our soul, there's this quotation that we saw in Desire of Ages where he says, where it says, one fountain only has been opened for sin, a fountain for the poor in spirit. You know, in the world, we are expected to be tough, macho people, but the world is calling us to have this sense of poverty of spirit. He dwells with those who are broken and who have a broken and contrite spirit. The Lord is calling us to realize who we are. Also, we saw another quotation where it says, another element of prevailing prayer is faith. So these are the two items that we have started looking at even as we study the topic of Lord teach us to pray. And we also saw that as we come into the world, each and every one of us comes with a gift and that gift, we are, we are given a gift of faith to start with. And it's our part to exercise that faith, to grow that faith, to cultivate that faith. There's a quotation that we read, which, uh, which says, the knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us, the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. So we are told this is the science of, of the gospel. This is science of sciences. Of all other knowledge, we need to wrap our mind on this. How do we cultivate faith? So may the Lord help us uh, to grow 
May the Lord help me to grow my faith, even as he helps you to grow your faith and to understand this science of sciences. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me, even as we learn how to grow in faith. There is also this quotation that we, we also read. It says, understanding how to exercise faith, this is the science of the gospel. Um, so, Today, I want us to look at uh, the topic which we said we'll be looking at, righteousness by faith. This is a topic that has been spoken over and over and over again, and I hope you will not uh, feel bored to look at it again. Uh, we are told in a review and heralds and Sabbath heralds, um, volume 77 of January 23, there's this interesting quotation where we are told, righteousness by faith is the third angel's message in verity. So this is the last message to be given to the world. This is the message that will come with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain to prepare a people to meet the Lord in the air. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are told in Review and Herald, September 3, 1889, there is this strong quotation that says, there is not one in 100, not one in 100 who understand for himself the Bible truth of this subject, justification by faith, that is so necessary to our present and eternal welfare. So this is a topic that we have as Adventist Church has been preached over and over again. But then we are told there is not one in hundred who understands it. So we have a problem here. So it could be that I am even talking about this, but I don't understand it. Including many other speakers who have spoken about it over and over again. Could be that we all don't understand it fully. But this is a this is, a, this is a message to prepare people. This is a message that will usher in the outpouring of the latter rain. And this is the science of sciences. This is what uh, the most uh, essential topic which we need to wrap our minds on. But they're not one in 100. Understand? May the Lord help me. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help us. Uh, so that we may be able, by the help of the Holy Spirit, to wrap our minds on this topic. So when we talk about righteousness by faith, what do we mean? There is this quote that uh, made it clear uh, to me, and I hope it also makes it clear to you. It's um, Manuscript Release, Volume 19, page 214, paragraph 2. The quotation says, It is only the merit and righteousness of Christ that will avail anything. But this is placed to our account in rich fullness. So in the judgment, the only righteousness that will be enough is righteousness, is Christ's righteousness. This should make us think of all the works that we do as an attempt to be better Christians without Christ. This should make us think of all the sacrifices we offer as an attempt to become better Christians without Christ. This should make us to think of all the helps that we render to people in an attempt to be better Christian without Christ. For without Christ, we will be in that group that will say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he will say, I never knew you. The quotation says, it is only the merit and righteousness of Christ that will avail anything. Only Christ's righteousness. So the question is, how do we, by faith, attain uh, by faith attain Christ's righteousness. How do we do that? How can we? Because that's the only righteousness that will avail anything. But even before we continue studying, uh, I want us to pause in our minds to really get that, and I, even as I try to really understand it well, that only Christ's righteousness will be counted worthy in the judgment. 
and after we wrap our mind in that in that in this statement very well and then we move forward it, the question is how do we by faith attain Christ's righteousness the bible says in romans 4 verse 5 romans 4 verse 5 says but to him that worketh not to him who does not work in a simpler english but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness. So the first question that we may want to ask ourselves is, who are the ungodly? Because this is very important to understand, even as we talk about this topic of righteousness by faith, starting with this verse. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Who are the ungodly? You see, ungodly simply means unlike God. And you will be surprised. No, I, I hope you are not surprised to find out that we are all unlike God. Because the Bible says in Romans 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All are ungodly. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. And we know uh, in the book of Revelation where it says, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. The glory referred to is the character of God. For all have sinned and come short of the character of God. We are all unlike God. We are ungodly. We are not born with inherent glory we are not born with inherent character of god in us we come to this world ungodly that is why the bible says in romans 5 verse 6 romans 5 verse 6 where it says for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly so did christ die for me Yes, he died for me. Did Christ die for you? Yes, he died for you. Who did he die for? He died for ungodly, for the ungodly. So in Romans 4 verse 5, uh, Paul refers to, the Bible refers to you and I, the ungodly, we who are unlike God in character. And that's why we are called now to fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment is come. And in the judgment, the only righteousness that avail or that will avail is the righteousness of Christ. So this is, this is a very important bridge that we need to make in our minds to accept that, number one, the first step that we need to do is to accept that we are ungodly, to acknowledge that we are ungodly to really accept in the depth of our souls that we are ungodly. For they, as the Bible says, for they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is not one that doeth good. No, not one. We need to accept and to acknowledge that we are ungodly. That is Romans 3 verse 12. The Advent Review and, and Sabbath Heralds, Volume 76 uh, of February 7, 1899, page 88, paragraph 2 says, This is the only way that anybody in this world can ever become righteous. First, admit that he is ungodly. So the first qualification and the only preparation for justification is for a person to acknowledge that he is ungodly. In me, there is nothing good. In me, I am a sinner. And after we have made, after we have made such preparation, all that is required is to obtain justification full, free, and sure, which is to believe that God justifies the ungodly. God justifies me, the ungodly. This requires, uh, this requires really not just outward acknowledgement, because it's quite easy for many to believe that they are ungodly, and even to, even to acknowledge it. 
Uh, you find this, uh, we, we do this often. We, you find in our prayers, we mention we are all sinners. Uh, in our sermons, we mention we are all sinners. In our conversation, we said we are all sinners. I'm a sinner. I'm not better than you. Um, and we, we say such things. And we outwardly we say, but to really believe that God justifies us, uh, somehow that we find that to be too much. And in a, in, a, in, in a way, because we have not really believed it in the depth of our souls, we try to find ways to straighten up a bit, to do better so we may, we may, uh, we may get some courage uh, before, we, to, before we come to God uh, to justify us. So we, 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 we try to look for something good in us first by works and then profess to believe in justification by faith. We do things to make us, uh, to make us cover up a bit. This, is, this happens when self is on the throne. And of course, the Bible says um, our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. By, by the word of our mouth, we acknowledge that we are ungodly. We acknowledge that we are sinners. But in the depth of our souls, we are not 100% convinced that we are. That's why we cover up with some works, with some mission work, with some offerings, with, uh, with some preaching and teaching here and there to get brownie points. And then we come to God and we, we call it justification by faith. And somehow we make ourselves believe in the profession of justification by faith. But when a person sees himself so ungodly, to a point that he sees no possible ground of hope for justification, that is when faith comes in. I want to repeat that. When we really see ourselves so ungodly to a point that we see no possible ground of hope for any justification in us, say we, we don't see any hope, that is when faith comes in. For as we have seen, faith is dependence on the word of God only, not in anything else. So long as there is any dependence on self, so long as there is in any uh, conceivable ground of hope for any dependence upon anything in or about self, there can be no justification. Why? Because faith is dependence on the word only. The Bible says in, uh, in, in Romans 4 verse 5, which we have just read, I want to go back to this verse again. It says, but to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, some may ask, but what about works? Because James says, uh, James talks about works. You see, the works that follows after justifications are the works which were, uh, which were, which were ordained for us to walk in. These are these are the works that Christ engineers in our in our lives. The works that are are called now these are the fruit of the spirit, not fruit, not our fruit, but the fruit of the spirit. The first thing is, we come to Him helpless and we fall on His feet and say, Lord. In me, there is nothing good. Without thee, I dare not live. Leave me, leave me not alone, else I die. Ellen White writes uh, about uh, A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner, and uh, she says, I, I just want to read this, this quote, even as I, as I make, I want to make a point here. Ellen White says, The Lord in his great mercy sent a most precious message to his people through Elder E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones. This message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifted Savior. The sacrifice for the sins of the, world, the whole world, it presented justification through faith in surety. It invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to all commandments of God. The reason I read this quote is to remind you that these two brothers were given a message to help us. And then Helen White says, I call this justification uh, through faith 
a third angel's message in verity. And she calls it a most precious message. But then after introducing E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones, now listen to what A.T. Jones wrote on this topic, which Ellen White says, this was a most precious message. Now listen to what the brother says. He says, when every conceivable ground of hope of any dependence on anything in or about himself is gone and is acknowledged to be gone, when everything that can be seen is against any hope of justification, then it is that throwing himself on the promise, promise of God upon the word only, hoping against hope, faith enters, and by faith he finds justification full and free, all ungodly though he be. In a way, when we see there is, honestly, there is nothing good in us, not just outward profession as we as we have done, as I have done. We stand on a pulpit and we say, you know, we are all sinners, but we don't really mean it. We profess outwardly, but we say when every conceivable ground of hope of any dependence or anything or in about himself is gone, how is how can this be possible? Is when we pray for God to help us to see the sinfulness of sin, for God to help us to come to realization of who we truly are inside of the cross of Jesus Christ. When we look at ourselves as we should really see ourselves, then when all hope is gone of self-justification, when everything that can be seen is against any hope of justification, then it is that we throw ourselves on the promises of God and ask him that word that has power to save us and to clean us and to bring us to him, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory like the only begotten son of God. He picks us up and is dusting us off, and then he is now is now beginning to produce works through his Holy Spirit. And every work that comes out after that in our lives are not self-righteousness, but these are fruit of the Spirit, the works which are engineered by Jesus himself. Lord, teach us to pray. May we pray that the Lord help us to feel the poverty of our souls, help us to see who we truly are, and help us to cultivate that faith that he has given us, that we may also receive the righteousness of Christ. Yeah, tomorrow, by God's grace, we will look at another condition um, which we may expect that God will hear and answer our prayers. And I pray that um, um, these few words that we have shared in this morning, morning devotion, well, in... Uh, in, in Europe, it's already afternoon, you can say afternoon devotion, that the Lord may take them from here and translate them to a language that will be understood by every soul that will hear. In the name of Jesus Christ is my prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother. Amen. You were going to say something? Um, no, just uh, go ahead. Okay. All right. So we just have two persons that joined us, uh, Jennifer and Santa Rita. And we're just asking for your prayer requests before we pray. Okay. Good morning. Mine is for unity in the family and for my siblings too. Um, just find a friend in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sanarita, good, good morning. Thank you for joining. Yeah, you're welcome. Martin, for prayer for my daughters, that you can come closer to God. Your daughters, right? Yes. Okay.
All right. You want to give their names? Santa Rita? And from Candice, Sabrina, and Felicia. Okay. All right. Myself and Sister, no, Sister Chichi and Sister Peggy will pray. And if Sister Peggy is not available, I will pray. After I play the song, Sister Chichi. I can go ahead. After I play the song, play the song, Sister Chichi. Oh, okay. 